Hello, hello. Please keep the greetings coming. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to another core webinar, Navigating Challenging Conversations with Afghan Arrivals. And uh, my name is Manar Marouf. I am the Education Officer for the Afghan Placement and Assistance Program for uh, with CORE. And today I'm joined by my colleague, Tiana Gonzalez, who is the Senior Community Orientation Officer uh, at CORE as well. Before we start, let's just do some housekeeping. Uh, we wanna let you know that this webinar is being recorded and the recording and resources shared in this webinar will be shared with you afterwards. Uh, there is the option for live transcript or CC during this webinar. So you can uh, turn that on if you choose. And then the last thing we always want to share with you is that your participation matters. So please feel free to participate with us in the chat or later in the Q&A, which I will explain in a second. So very quickly, let's just review some of the Zoom features for today. Uh, the first feature we're going to use is in the chat, and I see many of you are using uh, the chat already, so that's great. The second Zoom feature we're going to use today is the Q&A. Please, it is activated, so please post your questions in the Q&A section, and you will find it at the bottom of your screen. And the last feature we're going to use today is the poll. We have some poll questions for you to get some insight and information from you. All right, so what are today's ob session's objectives? The first one, we want to identify attendance challenges among Afghan arrivals and best practices for increasing attendance. The second objective is to identify importance of interpretation needs and how we can mitigate some of those challenges. And the last objective for today's session is to share new ONI updates and upcoming training opportunities through CORE. So let's jump in right away. And we have the first poll question for you. What is the percentage of ABA clients attending CO in your office? You have the poll right now in front of you. Please feel free to participate. All right, we're going to give it 10 more seconds to get more participation. Wonderful. So um, thank you, Tiana, for sharing the results with us. As you can see in front of you, um, we have between 90 to, uh, sorry, 27% of you mentioned that attendance is between 90 to 100 percent to 100 which is amazing um we also uh, have seen that 25 percent mentioned that attendance is less than 30 percent percent which is very interesting going between less than 30 percent to between 90 to 100 percent attendance um 18 percent of you mentioned that you are not offering co to apa clients at the moment so hopefully this webinar will provide you with some insight on today's um on certain challenges that you might be facing and we see that 12 percent mentioned that about 50 percent of you uh per attendance is about 50 percent and we have 18 percent that mentioned that attendance in between is about 75 percent so as you can see we see all these varying attendance levels among the uh, uh, apa clients uh but in a second in our next question for you we have uh, another poll question about uh, the ch why you think clients are not attending. So why do you think APA clients are not attending CL? Please select all that apply. Uh, 
I see some of you are asking about what CO stands for. It stands for cultural orientation. So for um, efficiency and, you know, to be quick, we say culture CO. Great. Thank you so much, Tiana, for sharing the results. As you can see in front of you, um, the highest percentage of, of, you know, the reasons why you think clients are not attending is 52%, and that it, that is related to having more important basic needs, such as find, finding housing and employment. This is followed by the, the not knowing the value of CO. And that is a challenge we face uh, as CO providers uh, all the time. And even before, before uh, receiving the, the increase in cultural orientation for Afghan arrivals. So um, as you can see, there are multiple reasons for <coughs> sorry clients not attending, but this is definitely not an exhaustive list. There are other reasons, but we uh, identify these as big because of uh, as a result of the pre-registration question that uh, we shared with you. Many of you mentioned some of these reasons. Uh, so moving on, we are going to talk a little bit about strategies for increasing attendance. And we identified four strategies for you. We are going to start with the first one. The first one is applying the whole office approach. So as you know, when clients first arrive, they have multiple appointments with so many people in the office. But specifically for this population, they have uh, they will have more uh, touch or more communication with the caseworkers, employment specialists, and immigration staff to, to figure out immigration uh, pathways. So uh, if you communicate with the clients about coming to cultural orientation and they still don't show up, I think these those staff from these departments will be your best friends uh, because they will be able to reinforce the importance of CO or relay key messages during service delivery. So once when you talk with those client with those uh, staff and tell them why it is important to, att to attend cultural orientation for clients, they will be able to share those messages with uh, clients. But if they do not, if the clients still do not attend, those staff can help you deliver key CO messages delivering uh, during service delivery. The second strategy we identified is creating trust with your clients and understanding where they are coming from. And in order to understand where your clients are coming from, CORE created an Afghan backgrounder where uh, you will be able to learn more about the history and culture of Afghanistan and some, and you will find tips on how to deliver cultural orientation for Afghan clients. And I, and I also uh, found in the registration uh, that many of you wanted to learn more about Afghan culture and how to work with Afghans. So this is your starting point to work with Afghans. And once you learn more about the clients, you, this is the first step into creating trust with them. And then um, the second step that you can create trust with clients is by asking open-ended questions. So what does that mean? When you call the client to schedule CO and you, <clears throat> sorry, invite them to cultural orientation, you can ask them questions like, so what is the most important thing for you at this point? What would make you feel more settled? You know that these clients are uh, experiencing, and many of them are experiencing a lot of stress because of the temporary situation and finding housing, employment, et cetera. So this is your opportunity to talk with those clients and show them the importance of attending cultural orientation because it will give them the knowledge and skills in order not to just you know, um, survive, but also thrive in 
Amer in American culture and American workplaces, et cetera. And the last, <coughs> sorry, uh, sorry, this is the third strategy is to coordinate service delivery to avoid conflicting schedules. And I'm pretty sure this is not news to you. When clients arrive, there are so many services that need to happen uh, within a very short period of time. And that leads to conflicting schedules. And it happened to me a lot when I, when I uh, used to do uh, direct service. So I identified three strategies or tips that you can use in order to uh, you know, make sure that schedules, client schedules do not conflict with other, with other services. One, one strategy is to do a case coordination meeting. It could be a weekly case coordination meeting or a bi-weekly co case coordination meeting where staff involved in service delivery uh, of you know, with a client or with a family, uh, you can coordinate appointments and services and that and then everybody knows when clients have cultural orientation or when they have, have job training, et cetera. Um, the other thing that you could do is to have a shared client calendar. So each client or each case can have a calendar that is shared with all staff that are working on this case. And so if you go on to uh, schedule cultural orientation, let's say on a Monday afternoon, but you see that the employment specialist has another appointment at that, at that time. So that way you are not going to schedule, uh, you're, you're going to avoid conflicting schedules. And the, the, the last thing is a standing CEO meeting or workshop. So uh, you can schedule CEO on certain days of the week or of the month. And that way, everybody in the office knows that, well, there is CO at this time, so they will be highly unlikely to schedule CO at that time. Okay, and the last strategy, if you've done all of this, if you talk to your uh, colleagues, if you uh, try to create trust with the clients, and if you, uh, you know, made sure that the client does not have conflicting schedules or appointments, and they still choose not to show up, to cultural orientation, you can share flyers with those clients to review key uh, CEO messages on their own. Tiana is going to share with us in the chat the uh, links to Core Nav, Settle in App, and the Settle in Facebook page. And these are three client or refugee facing uh, resources that will help them learn on their own. All right, so another, another challenge that you guys identified in the pre-registration question was about interpretation. And um, for those of us who worked in this field before, Pashtu and Dari uh, interpretation was not very much uh, required for some offices or some places, or so, but now we are facing a surge in this need. So we are going to uh, share a scenario with you and um, to discuss what you would do in this situation. So here's the scenario. You are planning to deliver CO to Ahmad, who is fluent in English, and his wife Zuhra, who speaks Dari only. You share that you're going to find a female interpreter for Zuhra. Ahmad quickly answers that there is no need for an interpreter as he will summarize everything to Zuhra later. What should you do? You have three options at the bottom. You thank Ahmed for offering to help you. It has been very busy and hard, at find, uh, and hard to find a Dari interpreter and not having to coordinate a volunteer interpreter saves you a lot of time. B, you ask Zuhra if this arrangement works for her and if she says yes, you schedule CO on time. And C, you thank Ahmed for uh, for for offering to help, but you know you say that both husband and wife should participate in CO and hear the messages in their language to make sure uh, that, to make their own decisions about their families and their adjustment. I see that a lot of you have already started pasting your uh, answers in the chat. Wonderful. But I have a question for you regarding. Um, Option A, have you had the situation before where um, the husband or the spouse says, I will 
interpret for my partner, no need to no need to find an interpreter. Okay, can you post in the chat what did you do? What did you do in this situation? I see many, many times. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It happens a lot and it happened to me definitely a lot. And uh, as much as I was uh, tempted to say, well, that's amazing because finding an interpreter specifically, if you don't have an um, interpretation program or a paid interpretation services program in your office, it can be very hard to schedule a, an interpreter. Uh, so, but definitely we don't want to do that because it is required that everybody gets a qualified interpreter uh, so that they can access to they can access information specifically sensitive information related to us laws or healthcare so if they don't feel if one part one partner doesn't feel comfortable sharing their information in front of the other so that will be very helpful and it will make in, it'll it will ensure equity in accessing those services Great. So thank you. Yes, the answer is uh, C. But also one of the things that you guys mentioned in the pre-registration uh, question was, um, yes, Margaret, that's, yes, uh, we tell them it is a requirement. So Margaret asked if we tell them if this is a requirement. Yes, it is so that they know that it is uh, not something that we decided because we want to, but it is a requirement of the program. Um, so one of the things I, uh, I, I also identified in the challenges that you shared with us or in the pre-registration question was um, not being able to find Dari or Pashto interpreters. And that can be a, a challenge, of course. So uh, Tiana is going to share in the chat links to uh, interpretation services that you can access. The first one is the Jumli. Uh, which is an app that you and the client can use, and it's for free. That's which is really great for that. The other one is IIB, International Institute of Buffalo. And the third one is CLI, Certified Language Interpreters. And th these, through ser these two services are paid services. So if you don't already have that in your office, you can talk to your director or manager to see if it's possible to have those services. And the last resource that Jana shared with you is um, a resource on how to create a community of practice in your office if you don't already have that. And that will help you um, have a pool of volunteer and free interpreters who you can call and schedule based on their time and, uh, and your own needs. Next slide, please. All right. Uh, the last thing we wanted to share with you uh, is the uh, APA objectives and uh, objectives and indicators updates as of January 2020, uh, 2022, uh, PRM uh, uh, updated the objectives and indicators that need to be taught or meaning the topics that need to be taught for cultural orientation. And those topics are health and transportation. So in the past, these, these were not requ required topics to teach, but now they are. And also in terms of the US law, laws lesson, now there is an indicator about polygamy, which means that you also should be teaching about polygamy. And uh, Tiana just shared the updated o uh, ONIs in the chat so that you can have access to them and see what, um, what uh, you know, parts of these topics you, you need to teach. Um, the other thing I would, I would want to mention about uh, the, um, the ONIs or the uh, APA cooperative agreement is that uh, in the resettlement and placement cooperative agreement, agreement, clients are referred to as refugees, whereas in the APA cooperative agreement, clients are referred to as Afghan parolees. And that's a, that's a distinction that you um, need to be aware of. Um, and uh, please, if you have any questions about that, uh, please post them in the chat. Next slide, please. All right, now into the questions and answers section. I see one question in 
the Q&A, but I also um, noticed that there are other questions in the chat, so I will start with the Q&A. Uh, David asked, what does PRM view? How does PRM view the final strategy of providing written information for client review? Do they consider that a sufficient meeting of the core requirements? Would it require some kind of special documentation? That's a very good question, David. I think this is a question for your um, national uh, resettlement agency if you are working with one because uh, these policies um, are um, sent by PRM to national resettlement agencies and uh, they will be best to relay that information to you. Um, I see a question from Riham. I added info about COVID. Do you have good resources to share with them? Of course, we on our website, you will find multiple resources about COVID-19 uh, and we will share that with you shortly. I see uh, another question from an, an anonymous attendee. Uh, many times men don't want to listen to women when they are teaching the class. They lie to us until a man contacts them about class. How can we confront and remedy this? I think that's not uncommon. Um, what one strategy you can do is when you call the clients to schedule a CEO, ask to have both a husband and wife on the phone. So if they... If they say my wife is busy, she can't talk right now, I'm outside of the house, etc. What you can do is that you can ask for a time where uh, the husband is at home or where they're both together and talk to them at the same time. Uh, we have a question from Emily. Will you share how many people are on this call? Of course. Uh, the last question from Daniel. Do you have resources that covers polygamy? We, at the moment, we do not have resources that cover polygamy, but uh, we will see in the um, uh, ONIs, the updated ONIs, that you will find that the indicators related to polygamy, uh, they include talking about it within the US laws uh, uh, framework. So you are able, uh, at the moment, to explain that very simply and clearly to the clients, but this is something that we will definitely um, work, we are, we are thinking about at core. How to involve, and Elinami asked how to involve women in engaging to scheduled community meetings. Can you please clarify your question? Would you mind unmuting yourself? If you don't feel comfortable, you can also type it in the chat. And in the meantime, I will ask, oh, um, so Kelsey is saying you cannot unmute. Uh, uh, sorry about that. Um, let's see. While we, while we solve this issue uh, for you, Elinami, I want to take David's other question, which is a very also a very good question. Is there any plan for the same CORNAV resources currently in Dari to be available in Pashto? Yes, we are working on uh, Pashto translations, and we will definitely share that in our newsletter and through uh, resettlement agencies that you work with so that you can have access to those once they are available. And uh, like as, Tia, as Jamie mentioned, we have them on our uh, YouTube channel. We have some videos uh, that we will also share with you. Okay, and um, we have a question from Gloria. Are there any video resources in Pashto for those clients that are illiterate in Pashto? Uh, I think the videos that we have in Pashto will be, they will be able to watch those videos. Uh, we use a lot of images. 
specifically for those who are pre-literate so that they can access those resources. So you, Gloria, you can go to, the, to our website, uh, sorry, to our YouTube channel and find those resources for sure. We have a question from Christy. What is the best way to print resources? It says we need permission to print the full 770 plus page manual. I think uh, you instead of printing the, the, uh, this whole manual, you can go to the individual lessons and review them and pick and choose which, which parts of those lessons are uh, applicable to your situation and then you can choose to either share them online or print them, print them based on uh, your own needs. And uh, thank you, Jamie. Jamie just meant, just shared our YouTube uh, channel for the Pashto list. I'm sorry if there are more questions, but we are we have three minutes left, and I want to make sure that we uh, cover uh, the last parts of our webinar today. So we do have two upcoming webinars, and uh, based on again on what you just meant, you just mentioned in the chat and the pre-registration question, we do have a February twenty uh, eighth on February twenty eighth we have a new webinar on cultural adjustment, and it will be, it will be offered at ten a.m. and two p.m. and on uh, March twenty third we also have another webinar on U.S. law laws and it will be from 10 a.m. till 2 p.m. Sorry, not till 2 p.m. from at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Sorry, that would be uh, torture uh, for both of us. Um, all right. And uh, for at the end, we have we have uh, uh, for you a post survey that we would really appreciate of if you fill out this survey and Tiana just shared it in the chat. We, you can also sign up for our newsletter if you haven't already so that you can receive all those updates about our um, you know, uh, new resources, new trading opportunities, et cetera. If you have any last questions, we still have two minutes, but if not, please feel free to uh, use this time to fill out the survey. We would really appreciate your feedback uh, to, in order to make sure that our webinars respond to your needs. Yes, Kath, uh, all these uh, links will be shared in an email uh, after the webinar, either tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. I can see your question now, um, Elin Nami. I hope I'm pronouncing your name, name correctly. Uh, have you tried uh, gender segregated uh, sessions? Maybe they don't feel comfortable being in, in sessions with the other gender. Yes, Sabine, we are going to provide uh, dates. We, I just uh, provided the dates. We have the 28th of February and the 23rd of um, March. We don't have the links to sign up for the webinars yet because we want to make sure that uh, the webinar description is uh, accurate for you. So uh, we, once we have that finalized, we will definitely share, share those links. Right, we are at time. Thank you so much for your participation in today's session. We know you you must be very busy, a, a, you know, in your in your you know in resettling Afghan clients. So we appreciate that, and we hope that this session was uh, helpful for you. And please don't forget to fill out the survey. Bye, everyone.